ten years. So five, four, three. Good morning and happy Sabbath to you. We are very happy we can come back to your homes this week to review our studies for the week gone by. I hope you had a very good week. If not, the Sabbath is a day of rest. And as we know, it's a time also to rejuvenate and to connect with the Lord. So we hope that you have a good time of rest during the Sabbath hours. But for this hour, we're going to look at our Sabbath school study. Um, hopefully you've had opportunity to review the study for a week. We'd like to go through and see exactly what we learned in the week gone by. But before we go any further, let me introduce my panel. We'll pray and then we'll start our review. My name is Chrissy and I'm moderating the discussion for today. On the panel with me to my right is our brother, Mark Kiva. Mark has been a panel, a panel member a few times, um, but for this year, this is the first time he's coming. So, Mark, you're welcome. Thank you. Good. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. And then on my left is our elder, um, El Nati. El has been a regular pan panelist on our uh, discussion. So I hope that together with my panelists we'll be able to review what we studied last week or this week and take some lessons from it. Let us say a prayer to start with Mark. Mark, can you say a prayer for us to start? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for your providence and love. See us through the week. Interactive study into your word. Be with us, guide us, teach us, so that our listeners and ourselves can be saved. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So, can you believe we are in February already? Yeah. The weeks and the days are going by so fast that I believe if you have something to do for the year, you should not procrastinate at all. And like the quarter has gone by, this quarter is also an interesting lesson, interesting set of lessons for us to learn. And this week has not been any different. So this week, we're on lesson five. And the topic for discussion has been dealing with debt. Dealing with debt. And I, 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 I hope you've enjoyed reading it or reviewing it as much as I have. But if you have not been able to, at least we'll get the opportunity to go through it and we'll learn it together. But dealing with debt, the, main, the key test says, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Let me, let me go to my panelists and ask them. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting topic for, I, 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 I never really imagined it will find place in our summer school study, but yeah. here it is. Because these are things that we normally would see in our everyday life. But here we are learning how to deal with debt. What would be your, your key takeaway from the whole week's um, study of the Sabbath school? Mark, let me, let me start with you. Uh, dealing with debt, what is, the, what is the key thing for you from this week's study? All right, uh, I think if you talk about this, you, you have a lot yes. to say. And as you said, I'm equally impressed, and I believe it's the work of the Holy Spirit yeah. that has guided our writers and our leaders to give us this end time message. Yeah. And we are not trying to be selfish as yeah. Adventists. We are trying to share to the world for other people to know the good deeds that we have. Yeah. Uh, my takeaway for this week is this. As the moment has been, the rich rules over the poor. The borrower is servant to the lender. Mm. Anytime you borrow unnecessarily, you become a slave to your lender. You do not have peace of mind. And that's what I think when you see when you borrow. So you are children, you when you are inside, yes. all sort of lies and those things. So I think uh, as we, we, we dig deeper, you have a lot to, 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 to share. So that is what I, I, I do. If you want peace of mind, and notice, uh, try to tell your children or teach them how to lie. Yeah. Be very careful as to how you do about it. Yeah. Uh, Mark says something that I believe as we go along will probe further. He says, not borrowing unnecessarily. Yeah. So I'd want to I'd want to underline that and put it somewhere. Yeah. We'll come back to that and then we'll see exactly what it means to not borrow unnecessarily. But Eldonati, um, what is your key takeaway from from this week's lesson? 
Yeah, my key takeaway is that um, as humans, yes. um, we may certainly, you know, would be borrowing yeah. in times of need. However, the Sabbath school clearly said that, um, and through the Bible, that we should pay our debts. I mean, when we borrow, we should pay. And like uh, Mark said, uh, borrowing unnecessarily becomes a problem, even if it is not necessarily. When you owe somebody, yeah. I mean, and the person always reminds you you are owing. Yes. You know, so without even having to wait for me to borrow unnecessarily, even the normal borrowing is still a burden. You know, sometimes it, it reminds you you owe somebody. So uh, my key takeaway once again is that yes, there may be occasions that you would need, a, 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 I mean, somebody to, to, to give you something, mm -hmm. but the Lord expects us to be faithful in, 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 in paying our debts. Right, thank you very much. I guess my key takeaway was from one of the lessons that talked about standing surety for someone. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a, a very good reminder of something that my mother told me once when we were very little. And she said that you should not promise, or be careful to promise, because when you promise, then you must keep it. Yeah. And so as we reviewed the summer school this week, I was like, it's very important that you don't even promise to, stay, to say, I'm going to stand in for someone. Mm. Because when you do, it's an obligation. In, in, in business, we say it's a liability, yeah. and you need to meet the liability. But let's, let's go to our study proper and see what the, the lesson had to say to us. I'd like to read the first few paragraphs of the lesson. I think I, I cannot give a better uh, summary of that, so I'll read the whole thing. It says, our definition of debt is living today on what you expect to earn in the future. Today, debt seems to be a way of life, yes. but it should not be the, the norm for Christians. The Bible discourages debt. In the scriptures, there are at least 26 references to debt, and all are negative. Sure. The Bible does not say that it is a sin to borrow money, but it does talk about the often bad consequences of doing so. When, all, when considering financial obligations, Paul counseled, remember, render therefore to all their due, Taxes to whom taxes are due, yeah. customs to whom customs are due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no one anything except to love one another. Amen. And that is recorded in Romans chapter 13, verse 7 and 8. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting admonition that we are receiving this week. And I hope that even as we go through the study, we'll get to appreciate more what the Bible has to say to us about it. So let's go on to um, Sunday. But let me start off by saying that times have become very difficult. I mean, economies all over the world are reeling under the pressure of inflation and all manner of things. Most people are not able to live within the incomes that they earn every month or every yeah. week as, you, as somebody have it. So is it really possible for us to live without borrowing? I don't know if it is something that is really practical, that we can live um, in this current environment without having to borrow money or to live in debt. Yeah, um, I would say it is possible because um, Deuteronomy 28, 1, 2, and then 12 yeah. indicated that if we live according to the word of God, if yeah. we obey all his precepts, we will rather be lending unto others instead of borrowing. Yeah. So from the Christian perspective, I believe that if we are in tune with God, it is highly possible. Great. And that possibility is as a result of God's blessing. Because God may bless us with a good job, with high pays, so that we may not need to be borrowing. Yeah. yeah. I like, I like that response because, I mean, what it also means is that God is interested in our day-to-day -day living. God is interested in our salvation, yeah. for, first and foremost. Yeah. But he's also interested in our day-to-day -day living. 
so that how we live here, even on this earth, is of interest to, to God. So and as Nat Nati has mentioned, what it means is that if we are in right connection with God, he supplies our needs such that even others come to borrow from us and we lend to them. But what, what, are the, what, are the, what are the studies say about the problems that we have mm. with debt or borrowing in our present dispensation? The, the study gave a few examples of, or gave reasons why debt comes about. And I'd want to pick the three reasons that the study gave and then maybe we can, we can elaborate more on it. So the first thing that the study mentioned was ignorance. Sometimes people borrow out of ignorance. You know, um, in the Western world especially, they, they live on credit cards. Yeah. And it's so easy to assess them that sometimes I think people forget that it is something that they have to pay back. And so a lot of people may not necessarily have the, the, the level of financial literacy to know that debt is really a dangerous thing. So the lesson made us aware that these three reasons are reasons why people have debt problems. And one was um, ignorance. The second one was greed. Yeah. And here people tend to live outside of their means. Mm -hmm. So I've seen people do this. I may not have the income to support it, but I also want to do it. And so even though they may not have the chance or the opportunity, they go borrowing to do it. And that results in so many issues for them. And then the third reason why that comes about, according to the lesson, was that sometimes we enter into situations of misfortune. Yeah. So you've lost a job, you've lost some asset that was generating income for you. And as a result, you are forced to go and borrow. I mean, of the three reasons that the study cites, I believe that one that may be a little bit out of our control probably would be the third one, where misfortune happens. Yeah. But the other two, um, ignorance and greed, are there remedies to it as Christians that will help us not to be able not to go into that, those kind of situations? I don't know, living with, living with greed, living with uh, ignorance, are there things that we can already find panaceas to so that we don't have to go into that? Mark, what do you think? Yeah, okay, I think there yeah, is remedy. When looking at how I put mine, I, I think I, 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 I pick something out. Okay. For money, money. Ignorance is a disease. Yes. By the time we sit up, we have to expect other people that can guide us as to how to do about things. In everything, I think, I remember when I was about to get married, I went through counseling. Mm. A, pastor, a lot of pastors and counselors sat us down and guided us into the, the, the new phase of life that we are about to enter. Mm. Now, life from class one or maybe nursery to our university, we go through the process and all this. Any other thing that we do, we seek guidance and counseling mm -hmm. and advice. So I don't see why we should neglect or we should shy away from financial guidance. And that is one thing I think we should do and start educating our church members even as to how to do about living our lives. Mm -hmm. So the ignorance we, we can cure by advising our people, trying to uh, organize some symposiums or other discussive the, 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 the messages that will uh, try to help and enlighten us to wake us up. Yeah. That, that, that's what I want to say, to wake us up. Most of the people don't even know why they need to buy refrigerator, yeah. why they need to buy a deep freezer and yeah. those things. And one, one man said, it's made purposely for the poor. Yeah. The little that you eat, that you couldn't consume, you put it in your, 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 your or whatever, so that the next day you go to the market, you buy things in bulk instead of every day buying, every day buying. Yeah. So, all these things, if you get to know, it will help us to save us from debt without wasting so much, so much resources. Great. I think it's Nati, you want to ask something to Yes, um, to like Sunday. Mark said, yeah, uh, there's a remedy, and the remedy is in the Word of God. Yes. You know, I like the way um, then you put it from the beginning. God is interested in the way we are living. Mm. Circumstances may make us borrow. Mm. But then God is saying that, look, there is a way you can come out of this. 
And that way is by listening to me. I'm your God. And I'm saying that do this, do that, do this. And you'll be out of debt. And so, um, yes, as a Christian, the only remedy is through the word of God. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. That's the best way I can put it. And, you know, in all this, the, the, the comes the issue also, so there comes the issue of, of tithing. Yeah. And so, as we learned in the previous weeks, sometimes we think that we can do everything by our own effort. Mm. And yet God says that, bring it to me, yeah. and I'll bless you such that there will not be room enough for you to mm-hmm. store it. And we feel, no, what I'm even earning is not enough. Why should I yeah. take some to God? Yeah. But I like how Adanati keeps emphasizing that it is God who gives us. It is God who provides. And so we can avoid the, 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 the scourge of borrowing yeah. when we trust God to take care of things. Absolutely. But also we need to learn yeah. how to live a financially prudent life mm-hmm. such that we don't go wasting money on things that we don't need to waste money on. For the... For the Sorry, uh, but that, before you go there, there's something interesting. The yes. second reason why we run into debt. Yes. That is the greed and then selfishness. Yes. You know, and the Sabbath school put it in a very good way that in response to advertising and personal desire, people simply live beyond their means. Yes. What they cannot afford, they just want to, yes. to buy it with all their money. Yes. And then it says that they aren't willing to live in drive or wear what they can really afford. Yes. Many of these same people also feel that they are just too poor to tight, like you said. Yes. We don't give a tight. You know, one day I think I received a mail and the person said um, Zachary Anati, who happened to live in the U.S., is dead and he named you as uh, his heir. And so you need to do A, B, C, and then they quoted a certain amount of money that, um, that my so-called uncle has made so much that uh, he's, I mean, let me say, um, he's written it down that I should be the one. So I showed the mail to a colleague of mine who said, hey, Charlie, send them, do this. Do. I said, ah, but what work have I done? <laughs> what work have I done? And they are quoting these millions of, you know what, this is a scam. Yes. Then my colleague was like, it's not a scam. And I said, let me prove it to you. This same person demanded something later because they've quoted about 65 million US dollars. Yes. <laughs> and then they said pay uh, $600 for processing. You see, you'll be tempted to do that. It's greed. Yes. And I told him that, look, I'm going to tell that person that if you are working to give me such an amount of money, couldn't you have paid that $600 on my behalf? Yes. Mm-hmm. When the money comes, I'll give it to you yes. even more. Yes. <laughs> the mail was not responded till today. I'm studying <laughs> this debt problem. And surprisingly, that colleague of mine, two years after, called me and said, you know, I've been scammed. Somebody called him and said, oh, we are processing this and that. The shipment have been done. They sent him, I don't know how they managed to do that, but they were able to send him a genuine bill of lading, max line bill of lading, mm. that he could even track when the vessel was coming. And you know what he did? Mm. He borrowed from somebody. I see. To send to the people. It was around 75,000, which is in all currencies. Now we say 7 billion, right? Mm. 75,000, 750 million. And this, my friend, is in debt today, still paying that amount of money. If not greed, yes. why would you, why would you yes. succumb to something like yes. this? So it speaks to what we are. The, yes. the, the Sabbath school lesson is speaking to what we are. Yes. You know. And so like Mark said, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit yes. so that at least we'll be guided by the word of God once again this quarter. Yes. I think that for, for, for most of the issues that we have around debt is really, as Nati mentioned, is really caused by our own doing. Yeah. And the media, social media, mm-hmm. traditional media is not helping much. Nah. Because the kind of things that you see and the way they they give you so much so much glamour and glaze, mm-hmm. you feel if you don't have it, mm-hmm. then you are you are backwards. Now I catch you. And we fall victim to some of these things. So a lot of the things that we do that makes us want to borrow is really our own doing. Yeah. And yet a loving God is saying to you, you give me mine. I gave you anyway. Mm-hmm. You return it to me. Yeah. 
a portion to me. And I'll still give you more than you can have. Amen. And yet we don't want to do. We want to rather go and borrow from, from human sources where yeah. we get to pay even far more yeah. <laughs> than we had it for. But I wanted us to read the, the footnote, the text that is given in the footnote. Mm. And Paul refers to, for the Bible, uh, the lesson refers, refers to Paul's writing in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 and 9. Verse 6 and, 9. and he says, now there's great gain in godliness yeah. with contentment. For we brought nothing into this world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, Amen. with these we will be content. Amen. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, mm. into a snare, mm -hmm. into many senseless and harmful desires yeah. that plunge people into ruin yeah. and destruction. Yeah. And so sometimes our desire to have the things of, the, of this world, mm. they so corrupt our minds that we eventually run into ruin yeah. and destruction. And the Bible is clear. Yeah. We brought nothing yeah. to this world and we take nothing. Yeah. And so let, let us be measured in how we want to pursue the things of this life, even to the extent of borrowing money to do someone. Uh, there's a story that I wanted to share, but maybe for lack of time, I'll just hold on to that story. If we still have time, I'll share it. But a lot of the things that we desire, really, it probably is not worth it. It's just probably for show off or some other reason. And then in the end, you're not able to get much from it. Then let's go on to Monday. Monday talks about following godly counsel. And the note says we we are material beings mm. and we have and we live in a material world. Yeah. A world at times can be very alluring. Mm. You'd have to be made out of steel and synthetic oil, not flesh and blood, not to feel at times the lure of material possessions and a desire for wealth. At one time or another, who cannot fantasize about being rich or winning a lottery? Though we all face it, and there's nothing wrong in and of itself, in working hard to earn a good living, or even being wealthy, none of us has to succumb to the trap of making idols out of money. Wealth and material possession, we are promised divine power to stay faithful to what we know is right. This is important because the temptation of wealth and material possession has led to the ruin of many souls. So, what has the Bible to teach us about wealth? And I, th I think as uh, we have all mentioned here, the social media, the, the, even the, the, the traditional media, mm. they, they make you want to have things that you know are out of your reach. What is our solution? I think that I mentioned this earlier. It is the Word of God. So what does the Word of God say about how we can overcome material things and not be lured into falling for them. Let's read Matthew 6, verse yeah. 24. Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters, mm. for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Mm. You cannot serve God and money. Yeah. You cannot serve God and money. Yeah. Um, Mark, how is it not possible for us that after all the things that we see in this life, I mean, with all the nice things, the flashy mm -hmm. cars, the nice beautiful houses, and all the things that we can see and have in this life, the Bible, the lesson says that it is not wrong to work hard to get some of these things. But what should be the, the cutoff point? such that you know when I reach here then maybe I'm going beyond my limit. How, how, do we, how do we use the word of God to protect ourselves really from falling into the trap of saying that uh, we are chasing after the things of this world even to the detriment of taking money, loans and other things to be able to do it. Thank you very much. I think this is a mind working issue. Yes. And we need, as my brother said, we need the guidance of God. Yes. And we need the intervention of the Holy Spirit to guide us. Yes. Because if you don't take care, you might be lazy. 
capitalizing on this opportunity, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, oh, well, I'm, I'm okay, but that, that's fine. Yeah. I have a small room, yeah. 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 Shirt and all those things. Yeah. So I, I, I can afford to eat yeah. three times a day. But in as much as we work hard, because God has given us a lot of talent mm -hmm. that through it, our resources can expand sure. so that we can be blessed into other people. Yeah. Yeah. But here comes the case. The very moment we keep trying to convince your sense, we talk about it, mm -hmm. trying hard without any guide, then you become selfish, eagerly for more, mm -hmm. eagerly for more, then the idol doesn't come in. Yeah. You have some people, Sabbath, you just start, you just stand in front of their closet for like one hour. <laughs> no, no, I think I, I this one, I, I, I wore this to church last yes. few months. No, 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 no. This, 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 that, that, you see, all those things, at times, it takes so much of our time. Yeah. We have different gadgets around, mm -hmm. and by the time we realize, you'll be Snapchatting, WhatsApping, mm -hmm. like, you'll be interrupted because you, you have time to read your Sabbath school, reading yeah. your Bible, praying, then... You have a DSTV, you are playing a UEFA Champions League and all those things. Mm -hmm. like, they are all good. But we have to sit down and prioritize. Yeah. Will this lead us into salvation? Yeah. Is this going to help me grow spiritually? Yeah. What I am trying to get attained, yeah, it's, it's okay. But am I not pushing so hard? We have a lot of people that have invested so much in their debt now because mm -hmm. they don't even have the energy anymore. So I think we need the guidance yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we need to be content. And as much as we are doing, we, we, we need God to help us. But we need to be content. Mm -hmm. Not to be so lovers of yeah. the material things. Yeah. We are, we are yeah. Some people can even kill you oh. if you took mm. your car or of your course. Car. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just step on my shoe. Yeah. You, you see? Yeah. So all these things and other things, we yes. be very careful. Yes. So I think the, the, the little steps really is whatever it is that I'm pursuing, does it lead me into salvation? Yes. Yeah. Or is it leading me away from God? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that the lesson tells us is that Satan uses death mm. as a way to trap souls. Sure. And the lesson made us aware that the borrower is servant to the lender. That's it. And so in as much as you always want to have and you are borrowing from all the wrong sources, mm. then you become a servant to the lender. I don't know how many times we've not heard this, of young men selling their souls mm. for money, yeah. only to be destroyed in the end. Yeah. And so I like what Mark says. Mark says, does it lead you into heaven? or it leads you into destruction. But I don't know if you want to add to it. Yeah, um, I think that Mark made a point that we need to look at it again. Yes, indeed. Sometimes people will capitalize on the fact that uh, John chapter, First John 2.15 says, love not the world. Yeah. And God means it. We do not need to love the world. Yeah. Neither the things that are in the world, and it is as it is. Because look, I keep on saying, I tell my siblings that even if you give me everything, if you if you gift me with all the things in the world, I may not live to enjoy it. So, what we need to be guided by or with is that, yes, I would want to own a house, but it should be moderate. Yes. I would want to own a car, it should be moderate. I'm a billionaire. Why would I um, want to invest in a hotel or put up a hotel like moving pick? Yes, I can own it. But what am I using this God-given gift mm. to do? Mm. Because Abraham happens to be a very rich man. Yes. God made him rich. But the richness or the riches that God bless us with he expects us to use it to, to, to propagate the gospel. So here, we are not at all saying that, um, you know, being rich or having wealth is bad. Yeah. But when you put your love into it, you would then understand what Solomon said. That, Look, what didn't I do under the sun? And he grew old to the extent that he sat down and he said, this is vanity. And one of the best scriptures I like is Solomon portrayed an old man who stayed to a god, mm. who even climbs three, four steps, and he's afraid of a height like from here down. Mm. That tells you that there is nothing in this world 
there's nothing that is of any good after the fall. And so the better world is coming. And so that is why, as Christians, yes, we would have to, to, to live, let me, how do I, I mean, temperately is the word, temperately. Let's own houses, let's own cars for the sake of our children because we, 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 God has given you children. And as a father or a mother, you have to take care of them. So, yes, I won't put up a house of 16 bedrooms, some do. Three bedrooms, it's enough. I won't buy 16 cars. One, two, it's enough. That is the kind of thing um, um, God expects his children to. And then the wealth that we'll create for ourselves, we should rather put them into expand, expanding the, the work of God. Amen. Amen. So I hope those of those of you who have joined us online, um, you are following the discussion. And I like the contributions my panelists are making and the insights that God himself is giving us into this study. But there was this quote from Psalm. Yeah. Psalm 50, verse 14 and 15. It says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. Amen. Then call upon me in a day of trouble. Mm. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Amen. So another way by which we can overcome the lures of the evil one into going in excess of what our means is. It's really to give to God what we are bound to give to him. And God is promising us that when you are in trouble and you call on me, because you've been true and faithful to me, yeah. I'll also be true and faithful Amen. to you. And so we thank God that he's always there for us. He's always there to provide for us. And we can only go through the challenges that we go through if we fail to tap into the opportunities that God gives us every day. Uh, you, yes, uh, I want to add uh, something small. Sure. To, yeah. Uh, between two, where can we get help with our finances? Mm -hmm. Following God with hands. Uh, I, I did this and said, letting partner know your net of yes. what you receive so that you won't borrow unnecessarily to impress your lovers. Yes. You see, we have some people, we, 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 before they marry or mm. before they marry their wives, mm. it's like they showcase the whole world as if they are from a background of billionaires. Yeah. So the moment the wife comes to you, you, you know you have <laughs> trying to impress this yeah. woman for her. To, you see, so you'll be boring unnecessarily. And we have some people, two, three, four, five months to one year. Yeah. Some people will come, hey, I'm coming for my money. Hey, yeah. mm -hmm. he borrowed this thing for my money. Hey, then the people will be. Yeah. Then your wife will start crying yeah. for those things. You see, you let your wife know that let you don't, you, you, you don't try to do things to impress people. Yeah. Let people around you know who you are. Yeah. With that, you have a free and a safe life. As a Christian, and you can, because you have a lot of people, they even come to church, they don't, they, they are hot. Yeah. All because of debts yeah. they, they have accumulated yeah. on themselves. So we need to be very honest. And let people, especially the people that love us, know who we are. Yeah. So that they will not push so much expenses on me. They know my husband owns this. Yeah. This is the amount of salary my husband did. And she's not going to bring anything bigger than that mm -hmm. to give you stress. So, yeah. I think Mark has already ushered us into Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday talks about how to get out of debt. And the service school gave us some very practical steps mm -hmm. by which we can manage our debt. Yeah. So let me just add by saying that some of us may be in some serious debt at the moment. Yeah. And maybe we are wondering, how do I get out of this debt? How do I get out of this, uh, out of this situation that I find myself in? Thankfully, this week's Sabbath school study give us some really, really practical examples of how we can do this. And Mark has already started to set the ball rolling. But let's read Proverbs chapter 2, 22 verse 7. Proverbs 22 7 says, the rich rules over the poor, mm. and the borrower is slave to the lender. Yeah. And so by all means, we want to avoid being slaves to the lender. Mm. And so how do we practically um, get away from debt? There are a few steps that the summer school recommended. Maybe we'll go through them one after the other quickly as we as we as we look at what we can learn from it. So one, it says step one is to declare a moratorium on additional debt. Yeah. So maybe you are in some debt already. And 
you see something else that, hmm, I wish I could have this. Mm -hmm. So our school lesson saying, put a hold on it. Put a hold on things that are not necessary. They are nice to have. Put a hold on it. And don't go and borrow money just to go and satisfy them. Step number two says, two is to make a covenant with God yeah. that from this point on, as he blesses you, you will pay off your debt as quickly as possible. Amen. <laughs> you know, there are some people, who, even, even prayer, who pray to God and say, God, I want to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And as soon as God gives you the means, you begin to rationalize. Yeah. I, didn't in yeah. I wish I could do it this way. I'm, I know better than God, so yeah. let me do it this way. But step number two is recommending that make a covenant with God mm -hmm. and pray to God. God, bless me to have the means to be able to clear off some of my debts. Mm -hmm. When God is good to you and he, he provides it for you, be sure to pay off your debt. Yeah. Step number three. Number three is the hands-on practical part. Sure. Make a list of all your debts from the largest to the smallest mm. in descending order. And then you try to pay off at least from the smallest one. Yeah. And so write down all the people you owe, all the organizations you owe. Yeah and try to pay as soon as you get money mm. from the smallest to the highest. Sometimes that might not be the, practic the best way. It could as well be that somebody is giving you so much headache that if you don't yeah. clear it, you're going to be in a serious mm. mess. And so you try to see which ones are most important for you to be able to clear yeah. based on the incomes that you're, you're getting. And so these are, these are some of the practical steps that um, the Sabbath school recommended. But I like, also like what Mark mentioned, that sometimes we also need to be open and honest with our partners. Yeah. This is what we have. This is how we can live with it. You don't go living, uh, as in, we say in English, living like the Joneses. Yeah. You don't live beyond what he can do. Yeah. Otherwise, you only bring more trouble and shame on yourself. I don't know if my panelists want to add on to um, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, so how to get out of debt, this is very practical. Yes. And I can boldly say that the step three has often been my practice. Yes. You know, I would often sit down and sometimes with my wife, and I may even ask, ah, do we owe somebody? Then, oh, yeah, 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 you made me send this to this and we need to pay. So we practically would write it down. Yes. To the extent that, I do not only write my debts down, but I even write how I'm spending money. Yes. And that often has been the brick puller. You know, mm, no, 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 no. I think we are spending too much. Let's let's hold on. You know. And I I can see myself here. I can really see myself here. And because you see, the Lord said that pay your vows, pay your vows. So it's like pay your debts. Mm -hmm. And so when the efforts are being made, God says that, yes, we are making efforts to pay, and he blesses us in order to be able to scrap them off. And so the, 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 I, we, I can reiterate again that this is the right time, because sometimes it might surprise you that church members are owing. And when you owe, I know a friend that is owing so much that he said, Charlie, you know, he thinks about it. Yeah. And so he wouldn't want to come to church. And it's a genuine thing that yeah. I've been telling him that, look, it is God who will get you out. Don't yeah. worry. So you pay as you end. You yeah. pay as you end. But like Elder rightly advised, there are some of the debtors, they are on your neck. Yeah. Just make sure. Uh, you settle them yeah. and the ones under yeah. less pressure. Wednesday, we'll, we'll try and move a little bit fast because yeah. uh, we are almost running out of time. But yeah. Wednesday talks about surety and getting rich schemes. Hmm. I don't know if my panelists want to quickly touch on uh, especially the getting rich schemes. Yeah. Why yeah. is it such uh, an attraction for the young people, especially these days? And what's, what's, uh, what is, uh, what's the lesson telling us about how we can avoid them? Yeah. So Wednesday, uh, my key takeaway on Wednesday is that, one, um, I need to be guided by God. Yeah. And so um, it will draw us to Monday's lesson also where it talks about greed. Yes. You know, 
why at all do you need so much when yes. you don't need so much? Yes. You need so much when you don't need so much. Yes. And so, um, like the example I gave you, um, bring uh, 2,000 and I'll give you 7,000. And I'm going to give you a practical example. Two months ago, a friend of mine, anytime I call him, oh, I'm in Obuasi, I'm in Obu, you know this mining area. Mm -hmm. So jokingly, I said, hey, so what at all are you doing there that you can't tell me? He said, oh, you, when we talk, sometimes you discourage people. I said, oh, ah, okay. So we ended the conversation like that. Do you know that after I've spoken with him three weeks ago, another colleague called me. She happens to be a female and said, ah, you know what, call Ebenezer. What's the problem? He came to me and said I should lend him 5000 and that he was going to give me 15000 I said, you don't mean it. But why? Eh, eh. I heard that they are now doing this galaxy thing. So it has a lot of money inside. So, so I also went to somebody and borrowed that 5000 and <laughs> gave it to them. And so you see, what both of them did was that, okay, uh, when I borrowed this 5000 from Elder Eni, then he's going to give me 15,000. I give my brother his, uh, uh, his 6,000. You know, you have only charged about 10%. Then I take all that. Yeah. You see, and business went bad. <laughs> <laughs> business went bad. Yeah. That is practice. Uh, 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 get rich quick. Yes. And some of these people, funny enough, eh? Elder, he won't talk to you because you say he doesn't want to hear that. Yes. He has to go into it. Yes. You know, but we have been cautioned that look, these things are scams. Yes. And Christians, I said that look, Christians are involved in these things. Let's not think that we are yes. uh, super uh, human. So we get involved in these things because every day we are in need. And so we need that money. But scripture says that look. When you see these things, they are warning that, look, it will, I mean, like, you, you don't deserve it, so don't even go for it. Mm -hmm. When everybody is charging 5%, yes. Piram tells you 39%, so you are running the no. Is your money yes. they, are, they, are, they, are, they are going for? But when is the, one thing I learned so much was this uh, um, surety. surety. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me about two, three sureties have been that I had to go and pay it in practical. Mm -hmm to pay it. And I said, ah, today I think God has spoken with me. I don't think I'll ever, ever be a sure, surety for somebody again. I can yes say, yeah, I know him, but if I have to be surety, I'll say, no, then please uh, forget about that money mm -hmm. because the lesson was practical. Mm -hmm. we, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Because practical, I can attest that I have paid monies I did not enjoy it. But it's just the fact that I had to stand in for a friend and say, oh, I know him. He can pay. I know him. He'll bring the money in two weeks. It turns into six months. It turns into, into seven months. The person says, look, you came for it. Get him for me. And because I can't produce you, I have to be free. So I end up paying those debts. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, you know how they say it in tree. I grow here, they know. Adios, 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 uh, but our time is running out very fast. But let's touch briefly on Thursday, and then we'll take the, the footnote on Friday. Thursday had this interesting um, lesson. And it uses the analogy of God telling the people of Israel that even for their farmlands, when they till the land for six years, on the seventh year, they should let the land go uh, fallow, hmm. so that the land can also rest. And the Israelites were also admonished that if somebody owes you hmm. the first six years, you try to get it after seven years, and you let it go. Unless the person is not of your fault, it's not an Israelite. Yeah. And so that was the lesson from Thursday, and I found it to be rather interesting. Yeah. Because I know somebody who owes me about six years now, <laughs> and we are in the seventh year now. And I was, I was saying to myself when I was reading, should I then let this guy go? Unfortunately, it's not of our fault. And so this might not apply. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, 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 the lesson also trying to let us know that there are limits that we can, we should as, as Christians yeah. attempt to reach. Mm -hmm. uh, borrowing is not bad per se. But I think as we have all said here, God is not desirous that 
we should be under anybody because we owe that person. Yeah. Sometimes you need to borrow to do business. Sometimes you even need to borrow to study. I remember some of us took yeah. student loans when yeah. we were in school and yeah. etc. But we are not to be under the curse of borrowing. Such as we become slaves to our limits. And that is what God wants us to do. So know your limits. Know where you can get to. Mm. And you know after this, I may not be able to even worship God yeah. in peace. And so then you try to avoid that. And so that, that's what the lesson trying to let us know from Thursday. Um, Edda, maybe you read the Friday further thoughts for us to bring our review to a close. Sure. So Friday talks about the three steps process of debt elimination. It's actually found um, in councils of stewardship. So let me read the point. Yes, the please first please. point says, be determined never to incur another debt. Yes. Deny yourself a thousand things rather than run in debt. Yes. This has been the case of your life, getting into debt. Avoid it as you would be a mailbox. A the second box. point, a small box, thank you. The second point talks about make a solemn covenant with God that by his blessing you will pay your debts and then owe no man anything. If you live on porridge and bread, do not falter, be discouraged or turn back. Deny your taste. Deny the indulgence of appetite. Save your pains and pay your debts. The third point talks about work them off as fast as possible. When you can stand forth a free man again, owing no man anything, you will have achieved a great victory. Mm -hmm. This is from councils of stewardship. Yes. And then finally, it says that one of the things we can do, another three points, is that we should establish a budget. Yes. In other words, we should always have a budget of what to spend on important things and then destroy your credit card. Fortunately, in Ghana, we don't have credit cards. You know. And then become or begin economic measures. Sometimes we aren't aware of how much we could save on our monthly expenses just by being careful about some of the small things that we purchase. They quickly add up. Yes. Amen. Amen. So this has been a very practical lesson on how we can avoid it. If you didn't take anything at all, at least you should have learned that God does not want us to live under debt because the borrower is always slave to the lender. And we want to be able to say that our Father who owns everything is our provider. Amen. So I pray that for those of us who are in some kind of a debt or another, even as we study, God should also give us the means to clear our debt. Yeah. Ellen White tells us that that will be a great victory. Amen. So our prayer will be, God, please help us. If we owe anybody mm. or if we owe some people, provide us the means to be able to clear them Amen. so that we can have the peace and quiet mm. to serve and to worship you. If somebody also owes you, sometimes you have to be a little bit lenient and see if you can forgive them their debts. Amen. But in all things, it is God who provides. Amen. We didn't bring anything to this world, and will not take anything out. So God help us, even as we study very practical lessons, Amen. that we'll also be able to apply them in our lives. We thank God for this lesson. Uh, Mark prayed to start, so Elonati will have to pray to end this. Yes. yes. I have one thing to say. Oh, sure. sure. When we are in serious debt, yes. we tend to steal from God. Of course. Yeah. So we should take note of that. Yes. Thank you very much. Sure. When we are in serious debt, we tend to steal from God. Yeah. God is not happy. Yeah. May God help us. Amen. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath morning. You have given us the truth as it is in Jesus once again. It is your desire that your children will owe no man. Please, we owe so much, but we also trust in your word. That as we have learned, you will help us to practicalize this lesson in order that from today onwards, by the close of this year, we can come and testify that we are owing no man. And above all, help us to be faithful, because when we are faithful, you would also help us to clear all our debts. And so, Father, thank you once again this morning. Thank you for our friends who are watching online. Bless all of us in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.